morning, everyone. So it's a new week at Wildflowers and I'm pretty excited about this week. It's a week that I definitely enjoy. So I'll just give everyone a minute. Been doing lots of nails, lots and lots and lots of nails for different projects that I have going on and for our weeks at Wildflowers. And um, good morning, Kathy. I'm excited to talk in depth today about roses. This is gonna be um, all about roses, all about how, you know, roses are structured. I'm glad you all, I see a lot of master artists, so I'm glad you guys are here. Um, this is one of those topics where, there's a lot of topics where I don't really get to teach too in depth at Master Artist Week just because we're like trying to move along and get through the nails. Uh, but the topic of roses is something that, hey, good morning, Michelle from Alaska. Hi, good morning. Yeah, the topic of roses is something that, um, it's taken me a long time to learn everything that I've learned about roses and um, to be able to sort of like, look at the structure of a rose, look at the way, um, you know, like the shapes, the balance, all the parts and pieces of a rose and sort of how to put it together. And today specifically, we're going to be looking at how to do roses just, good morning, Linda, how to do roses just straight on, like you're looking straight at a rose that's opening or that's open. Um, and so we're going to kind of work our way through that. I will do a couple demonstrations today. Um, I will demonstrate a blooming gel rose because that's just like a popular one, um, that a lot of people struggle with. And I actually have, you know, it's funny. I do a lot of these nails so much, um, and I do them over and over and over and still every now and then I will have some sort of breakthrough or learn something different or understand something a little bit better. So actually on the blooming rose, uh, when it comes to the center of the blooming rose, I actually had figured out like a little, um, a little something to uh, help with the center. If you feel like you have a wonky center, a lot of times it is a little extra. Like normally, um, <laughs> when you're doing a blooming rose, just to get through it, it's you're like, yay, I got through it. Um, so if for some of you who like feel comfortable with your rose and you just want to improve it a little bit, it'll be good. For others of you who like can't even get through the initial like steps of it, um, maybe it's going to be like TMI for you. But anyway, we'll get there when we get there. Uh, I will also do a demonstration of a rose using the Wildflowers Art Paste. So we'll do both of those roses today. But before we do that, I really want to get into looking um, at the actual structure of a rose. I'm going to draw, um, do a couple drawings, a couple diagrams to just help you guys understand because I feel like it's really important that you understand uh, the good morning, the structure and, um, like all of that of what's going on with the petals, how they're like overlapping and intertwining and all of that stuff. So, uh, we will get started with that. Um, before we do, I just want to say good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm Lauren. Uh, my name is Lauren Weyerman. I'm the creator of Wildflowers Nails. Um, and, uh, we have a new product that just got here this week and we do not have very many left. I want to say, our first batch we only got like 240 bottles and I believe we have like under 50 bottles left of it so if you're someone who wants it um get it please uh it is our look how cute you guys it's our unicorn I know it's like hard to see because of the there you go our unicorn hollow gel okay um, so what this is, is it's essentially, um, the unicorn flakes. You guys know what the unicorn flakes are. We actually have the dry flakes that are, oh, thanks you guys. We have the dry flakes that are in this. So <clears throat> if you want to, um, just have the flakes, you can get just the flakes. Um, but we put it in a gel just to make it convenient. So it's not like it's something that you can, like you can do this without this gel, but the gel just makes it really easy and really convenient to apply. So, and I'm obsessed with the bottle. Like I told my girls, I was like, I feel like I've reached the pinnacle of like designing products. Now I do love our swatch book. This is our swatch book. So we have like probably 40 new gel polish colors on their way and not here yet. I'm being patient with you guys. So, but I love uh, this swatch book that I did. 
it's got all like the different ladies um, all over the front like coming out of flowers and I think it's like so adorable. Is that like super adorable or what? So I love this one, but the unicorn one was, it was just extra fun and it totally does look like Rosanna at nail camp in her unicorn like puffy outfit. Uh, so, <laughs> all right, oh, Maria, that's amazing. So I'll show you guys this close up. I'll flip the camera down. It is a no makeup day for me. I just was not feeling it today. I was like, I don't feel like wearing makeup and I'm not going to. Uh, let me see if I can show you, see if I have some flakes. Um, I have the unicorn flakes right here. So these are the unicorn galaxy flakes. They're just in a little container. And here, let me, let's, uh, let's switch cameras here. Let me switch lights and cameras. Let me get my light on. Oh, there we go. Some more light. <laughs> Uh, I'll flip my camera down so that y'all can see what I'm doing here. I've been working on, oh my gosh, like projects galore, doing a big one right now with Revlon and CND um, for some of their future um, stuff that's coming out. So I know I could do no makeup every day, you guys. Like I really think I could. I mean, it's fun sometimes. My kids the other day, for God knows whatever reason, took black eyeshadow and literally just their whole faces. And they tried to like draw little uh, like cat whiskers on top of it and I was just like, oh my gosh, you guys. Um, and so then of course like one of them started crying and everything in the world happened. And so anyway, like a few hours later, I finally got my little one, my six year old with a makeup wipe and I wiped off all of it except for like right here. And I left her with this goatee, it was hilarious. She went in the car with to Burger King with my husband with her goatee. I was like, <laughs> sometimes it's hilarious being a mom. All right, <clears throat> let me switch the camera down, you guys. So just bear with me, bear with me, and we're going to start doing some diagrams and stuff like that. So, okay. Every week when I flip the camera down, it gets better and better, like easier and easier and more graceful somehow. All right. Okay, y'all. Uh, so anyway, this is don't, oh my gosh, you guys, I took my nails off. I've had nails on for like, oh my gosh, since before we went to Columbia. And my, my nail beds are so, my hyponychiums are super extended right now. And like, I keep on either bending my nail back or down and it is so painful. I really like need to, and I can't shorten them anymore. You ever have that happen? It's so painful. Anyway, so this is the Wildflowers Unicorn Hollow Gel. Is that hilarious? I, I think it's like hysterical. And so all it is is a clear gel that already has the flakes in it. Here, let me put the, uh, I don't know if the flash is on or off or what. But anyway, uh, the, um, the unicorn flakes are already inside of this. So basically like what we did was we took a clear gel and like dumped a container of unicorn flakes inside of it for you. So it is a little pricey, but that's because like it has the actual chrome flakes already in the gel. So it is like expensive to make, um, but it's super convenient. So anyway, that's what that is. So that's our newest and we only have probably about 50 left and then it's gonna be on like a back order for a while. The unicorn flakes, like the actual flakes that are inside of that gel polish, and I'll see if I can like pull this little, I don't know if I can get this little thing out right now. Um, sometimes I have to use a little assistance, but so these are the unicorn flakes um, in here. So we've just basically taken this and put it in the gel. And these ones are, they're not like super small. Um, but the ones in the gel are definitely like we we definitely tested different sizes when we did it because we didn't want to put oh we have 49 left okay we didn't want to um we didn't want to put them the chunks in so big that it became difficult to like top coat over so uh we we picked like the perfect size it goes on super smooth on the nail and what's really cool is it's a really it's smooth it's smooth you don't know you're not like fighting with chunks so anyway all right on to roses um so roses roses have a, a center part i used to teach when i would teach roses i would teach one two three for roses um one being the center part um on your heels on the wall oh did you mean to say heels 
Did you say bottles? Did you mean to say bottles? Uh, I haven't had any issue with like the sun coming in my window, shining on my bottles um, at all. But if you're worried about it, don't let the sun shine on your bottles. I'm not, I'm, I mean, you guys, I own this company. So like if my bottles get ruined because they're sitting in the sun for hours and hours every day, like it's really easy for me to replace them. <laughs> so anyway, roses. So one, two, three. One is typically going to be uh, your center, which is some sort of like squiggly cinnamon bun like that. And then usually you've got two that are sort of hugging this. Now, where to start and finish the two? Does it really matter? Honestly, like not really. Um, but one thing with roses that I do prefer is that the petals tuck. So if this is my petal number two, I'm not going to start petal number three, like the edges of it right there. I'm going to allow it to actually kind of like tuck either inside of the last one or underneath so that this one's coming over top like that. So typically there's some type of tucking involved where like one petal's tucking into another petal to some degree. So we have one and then we have one, two, and then we'll have three, one, two, three, and the other thing that I want to point out when you're doing a rose is that like you don't want to go plastic on me. So if I was, what I what do I mean by plastic? I mean those people who are perfectionists that are going to be like, do, 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 with their perfect little, um, perfect little shaped petals and everything's like super uniform because this just looks so, oh, I got a little wonky there, but that just looks so plastic, right? Um, it just looks fake. Every petal is identical, and that's not really how God made roses anyway. So it is important to put a little wobble um, in, your, in your petals. Now, here's another thing I'll point out too when you're doing roses, if we're just using like the one, two, three type of technique. So we've got one, and then some people are like, oh, I watched that like Donna Dewberry do her one stroke thing. And like when she does her pedal, she's like, hi, 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 like that. Like, okay, if you want your rose to have those like frisky, it's going to be more like a peonies. Um, but if you want them to have those like frisky little ends, um, then the entire thing has to have these like frisky little ends. You can't be like, oh, I'm going to give it smooth petals and then like, oh, let me give it like a frisky one and then like, oh, I'm going to give it a plastic one. Okay. It just don't look right. Now you can do the frisky like little endings on your petals. That's fine. But if you're going to do it, you have to do it consistently throughout the whole flower, which means like this thing is going to have to get a little like too. Okay. So just be consistent. Um, in either doing inconsistent petals or be consistent in doing like this, whatever, I just called it like a frisky, frisky petal. Um, like, yeah, what would that be? Like frayed looking sort of, I don't know. So anyway, uh, when we do this, that's pretty much what we do. Now, when we do a blooming rose with a blooming gel, all right, we're going to pick up our, our gel and a lot of times I'm just gonna like illustrate this. If this is our if this is our very close up of our brush tip right here, the gel comes on this and it likes to be like doink right here and form this like ball of gel um, up there on our brush that's kind of like not on the tip. So um, the long if you ever like pick up gel on your brush, the longer you just sit there and like watch the tip the further back this is gonna go, it's just gonna continue to rise up and rise up and rise up on your brush. So when you're doing this, you have to like get that gel on your brush and you uh, have to do it when the gel is sort of more like down here and it hasn't quite crept up this high, if that makes sense, okay? Um, it's gonna happen. There's not a way to get enough gel on your brush and do a blooming rose and to stop it from happening because you have to get a bunch of gel on your brush. So you just have to move fast. The solution is being, oops, this pen is um, fun. It just closes fast. Okay, that's the solution. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast, gotta go fast, gotta go fast. I watch uh, Talladega Nights way too much. 
like my favorite movie. <laughs> that and Nacho Libre. All right. So when we do the blooming rose, you're going to put down that first, you're going to get a blob, you're going to go fast, and you're going to place it down and sort of swirl it like this, okay? When you go to swirl it, um, I'm going to tell you to put the tip of your brush down, and then I want you to push on your brush a little bit when you come through this part that's close to you. That's my newest thing that I've discovered because when this blooms and it's like skinny here and heavier here it actually looks really awesome and it makes it super easy for you to uh like have the center look right okay so you don't want to get like a big fat blob with like a skinny tail like this all right when you do it you want to try to like start it and then push down a little and the cool thing is that if your brush is doing this annoying thing that it does, you should be able, even if you get here, you should be able to kind of get it started with the tip of your brush and then sort of lay the brush on its side just a bit to push to get that blob. And then you should be able to like kind of lift back up on your brush to just use the tip to pull it up. Okay. So that's like the newest thing that I've discovered when you're doing that center blob. Okay. So that's number one. You're welcome, you guys. I love uh, I love helping you guys with this. I love doing this. So, all right. So, number one, we're gonna have our our little blob, and we're gonna try really hard to sort of push when it comes to the front, when it comes closest to us. Now, to do the rest of the petals is super simple. Don't overthink it. You're gonna drop a blob of white gel polish, but here's the thing: like, where do you drop the blob? Right. Um, a lot of people want to drop the blob right next to the end of whatever they just did. And that's really not the right place to do it because what's going to happen. So say we drop the blob. Let me actually, let me come down to this one and do it here. Say we drop the blob here. What's going to happen is, so you're going to have like a blob sort of like, I'll just do it with dots, like sort of right here next to it. And then you're gonna pull it this way, yes. So it'll expand that way, but it's gonna be really like wonky when you go, it's it's gonna like do this like weird little wonky thing right there. And you don't, I mean, it's like okay, but it's kind of not okay. So the best place to drop your, your next bead of product when you're doing a blooming rose, and I'll, I'll zoom just a little bit, is always gonna be on top of wherever you just ended, whatever you just did, okay? By dropping it there on top, uh, you're able to like cleanly pull out both sides with your brush. You're gonna drop the bead and you're gonna stick the tip of your brush. Let me just grab one real quick. Oh, this is not a good one to use. This is my brush with like two hairs on it. And let me just like put in a quick plug for the, for the um, vegan brush set. You guys, if you don't have it, get it. It, you have to get it and you have to try these brushes. What's so great about the vegan brush set is here, wait, I have one here, is that like these are, these, the fibers that are used for the bristles are like manufactured fibers. So you're not going to get like, this is the, the vegan, vegan brush set, right? Extra lighting. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I do the nails, I will. I'm just trying to get you guys to kind of see what, uh what I'm drawing more than anything, but I, I will make sure when I do the nails, you guys can see it good. Um, so the vegan brush set real quick. Yeah. I think a lot of people are like, Oh, like, I don't know about the vegan brush set or whatever, but like, I, I will just say from like an artist's perspective, the consistency, um, that, that the, the bristles have is just really, you can feel the difference, um, a lot. So these are like manufactured bristles. And uh, you can just really, let me get a little alcohol. You can really uh, feel in the bend of the brush. Y'all know what the bend of the brush means, like what that is, the bend of the brush. Um, the bend of the brush is just the way that the bristles sort of like bend when you're working with them. And it has like a really consistent bend to it uh, when you work with it. Um, the the sable hair ones also do but like just ever it's it's real uh it's real brushes 
so, or it's real hairs, like actual animal hairs. So you're going to have like some inconsistencies in the thickness and in the spring of it. So I'm just saying like, yeah, I think a lot of you will be surprised with the vegan brushes and the vegan brushes are made with synthetic, um, like sable hair basically, which is like a nylon ish. I don't want to say like nylon. Yeah. You guys can go to wildflowersnails.com. All this stuff is there. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like a, um, a nylon, but it's not like the nylon that you think of for like cheap nail brushes. It's actually just as expensive as Kalinsky Sable hair, uh, these brushes, um, the hair, when I like have them manufactured, it literally costs exactly the same as Kalinsky Sable hair. So, uh, and there's this great brush in there that we don't really sell separately at this point. It's the purple one and it's like a great little gel oval brush. All right, back to the roses. Sorry, I wasn't trying to like go off. I was just mentioning that like, if you guys don't have these, definitely put it on your list okay here we go back here so uh you're gonna drop the bead above the end of that and and same thing you're just gonna continue now so you can uh come right here don't put it beside okay don't go beside it go above it a little bit and then you'll be able to pull it out that way and you'll be able to pull it out that way and maybe we'll have one in the middle and we'll just start off with three we'll skip the two um, it doesn't really matter too much, but going above it will cause these to uh, tuck nicely when you go above. So every time you drop your bead, look for the end of another petal and try to go directly above. Thanks. Whoever's posting, is that Aaron or Jotana? Thank you. I appreciate, um, I appreciate you doing that for me. Um, so yeah, you're just going to find a place. You're going to drop your bead. You're going to pull to the left and pull to the right. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. Um, I'm not going to go straight to a nail. I'm going to go to my little flower palette, okay? This is a great place um, if you're someone who feels like you need to practice this or you're, you're feeling like anxious or nervous um, about doing it on an actual nail start here. This is a great place to practice, okay? Let me actually flip it on this side. This is just our little silicone flower palette. And this is our white gel polish, and I'll make sure I zoom in, make sure y'all can, can see what's happening here, okay? This is a, I'm actually finally have like an old bottle. I've used the snot out of this. All right, so this is uh, the color tissue paper. It's our white gel polish. It's not chalky white, it's just a nice white. All right, so first things first, we're gonna pick up this this guy here first okay so uh to pick this up you you can't it's funny when you watch people like i'm very used to taking my brush and putting it in the gel and just rolling it automatically because most of the time when i'm working i'm doing like super thin lines and stuff like that so to actually pick up a ball on here you have to pretend like this is a spoon and this is your cereal and I'm going to take like a scoop like that. And I want you guys to just watch it. Watch what's happening. So right now it's staying pretty much like on the end of it, but you can see it slowly starting to creep back and it's creeping back and it actually does take a little bit for it to creep back, especially when your brush is clean. Um, now let me show you, hold on, let me get like some gel up the brush get it up like in the hairs when you get the gel up in the hairs and then you go to scoop like a scoop of it you're gonna see it actually move a little bit faster um, because it just likes to like gel attracts gel so you can see it's moved back even a little faster and it's even become more of like an oval shape because it's just creeping that way so um, another pointer start with a brush that is like uh, maybe clean and dry for your first bead and then it won't jump back on you so much and you can just clean and dry your brush really fast with some isopropyl alcohol not a big deal because you're going to get gel in it right away so here we go we're going to pick up our first bead by scooping like it's cereal okay and I'm actually going to get just a little bit more we are going to make a swirl remember we're doing this like first initial swirl so when we do the swirl we are going to put uh, the, the tip down and then we're going to actually kind of press into that swirl as it gets close to us and then sort of lift back off a little bit, okay? 
And if you need to come in there and like make any adjustments, you can, okay? But a swirl sort of like that. And I'll zoom in pretty close here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up yet another little bead and we're gonna work kind of quickly. So that one's gonna get dropped directly above, not beside, but above. And we're gonna put our brush in and we're gonna pull to the right. And I like to go pick up just a little more gel on my brush and pull to the left, okay? Again, we're gonna put that blob directly above, not beside, but above, and we are going to come in here with my with my brush and we're gonna pull to the right. And then I like to get just a little pinch uh, more of gel on my brush and I'm gonna go in there and pull to the left, okay? And then again, scooping in there like we're eating our cereal. You guys have to get enough gel to make this work. Um, I have done this and taught this, like I can't even tell you how many times I've taught this uh, nail. And the biggest mistakes that are made are people just like don't get enough gel on their brush. They're afraid of getting like an actual blob of gel on their brush. So don't be afraid. Scoop it up like you're eating cereal or like you're eating soup. Place it above, okay? And then we're gonna pull one way. And if you feel like getting a little more on your brush before you dig in and pull the other way, you can, okay? So this is basically like what it's gonna look like um, at the beginning. And then the blooming gel, the actual bloom gel on the nail is what makes it spread. So we're gonna put this on the nail. It's gonna be wet, it's gonna be uncured. We're gonna do this right into the wet gel. And, and then what's gonna happen is this gel is going to cause this to just sort of like blossom and expand. It's actually like really kind of cool. So let's do that now. I'm gonna uh, get a nail. So I've got like a little nail tip holder here. So just bear with me for a second. I'm gonna just do this on a black nail to save time, okay? But normally you would take your gel polish you would uh, make your nail black. But I'm skipping that step just to go a little faster for you guys. Yeah, you don't want your petals like to be perfectly uniform. You also don't want to go crazy. So um, <clears throat> I typically will not do more than like this many petals unless I feel like it needs it because you will get a pine cone. You, like if you're one of those, like that's a great point, Trisha. Yeah, a lot of people have trouble stopping. They're like, I just don't know when to stop adding petals, so I just keep going. You're going to have a pine cone um, is what's going to happen. And you're trying to make a rose, not a pine cone, all right? So definitely need to stop adding petals at some point. <laughs> okay. And you'll see, I like to put my rose sort of up in the corner a bit when I do it. All right, so I've got my white gel polish here. Um, I'm working with the magenta brush. So yeah, I know it is flashbacks. And I say like the same thing every time I teach it. I'm like, not beside it, but above it. Not beside it, but above it. So this is the clear blooming gel that I'm going to put on the nail. How much blooming gel do I put? Do I put it super thin? Do I put it kind of thick? Um, I'm going to say you put it medium. You definitely don't want to have like dry spots on your nail. And you also don't want to have it thick because you're adding more gel to this. So you really don't need it thick. You just need like a moderate sort of medium coat. All right. Um, I am going to dry my brush just a little. Quick, quick little pinch, okay? I'm going to take my first little glob. And remember, when we do this, um, I am going to actually let it creep a bit. Get it creeping just a little bit so that I can try to kind of push on it. I'm just gonna spin that so I don't stick my hand in it. Okay. I'm gonna do my center sort of up here in the corner and look, we're just like waiting a second and just letting it creep up just a little bit so that I can sort of get it to like do what I want it to do. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna set it in and then I'm gonna really push right there. And if I feel like I need to, I can come and cheat just a hair right there. All right, so there's our first one. We're putting a blob. Now, you can't take all day with this, all right? So I'm placing a, a blob above, and then I'm going to come through and pull that direction, 
touch my brush into the gel just a bit and pull the other direction. Putting the blob above Pulling to one direction, getting just a little more gel on my brush and pulling the other way. Hopefully, too, I'll be able to show you. There's there's just so uh, many cool, so many cool things to doing like roses and stuff that I want to sort of share with you and show you. So hopefully we'll have time today. All right. So again, like, do we really need a lot more petals? for people to figure out this is a rose. And what a lot of you uh, nail techs do is you start to just like overanalyze everything. You're like, mine looks like a fetus. Mine looks like an exploded whatever. And it's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> you have to let it sort of like do what it's gonna do and don't like judge it so much. We judge ourselves and judge everything so much that it like is almost counter- um, productive. Uh, so like, just relax. And I am going to add one more up in here. There we go. And like, to me, I'm like, okay, I definitely see a rose here. Uh, I know you might see a fetus with a lot of weird things wrapped around it, but I definitely am like seeing the rose that I'm trying to get. I, I like that there's this black spot over here. It adds more dimension to my rose. It makes it look like it's popping more. And if I don't like the way that this is like coming down right there, you can just wipe it off. Like, cause you're gonna put a coat over top of it. So like, you know, um, Leave it or don't leave it. It's it's not a big deal. The gel's still wet. So if I'm like, I don't like what it's doing right here, just come in there and get rid of it. There. It really didn't bother me. I probably would have left it, but you know, I'm just showing you that that is an option. So I'm letting the gel sort of spread. It's spread out really well now. I'm definitely going to cure it. Uh, at some point, the gel will actually start to like get wonky. So you have a bit of a window <laughs> I know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, but you have sort of a window, I would say, of maybe like 60 seconds um, to to where it starts like almost getting too bloomed out and it you start losing um, you start losing the the look of the rose and it just looks like a bird flew by and crapped on your nail. Um, so we don't want to take it to like the bird crapping. We got a little close here. This is going to be a floppy rose, all right? Um, but I'm still going to use it. I think it'll, it'll be fine. So now we have to figure out, okay, like we could totally just leave it like this and we could put red glass gel over it and be happy with it. But I like to highlight it. It doesn't take that much longer to highlight it um, and, and to just kind of define for the eye what's going on. What do I mean by that? By defining for the eye what's going on. Um, well, <laughs> you have these shapes. And so, for example, when I say you have these shapes, like let's look at this guy right here. This, this blob right here is a shape. And you can see actually that it's a little bit brighter on this side of the shape and it fades really nicely um, out here. So <laughs> I can turn this into a petal that is uh, where the high side is here if I want to, but the brightness of the petal is already here and whatever's closest to you is gonna look bright. So what, I, I, what I'd like to do is make it look like this petal is actually like, hold on, I gotta zoom out to kind of use my hands to, to illustrate this. But like if this is the middle, I want this petal to look like it's coming this way. I don't want the petal to look like it's going out. I want the petal to look like it's still kind of hugging on and it's just starting to open up. All right, so that means that this part right here is gonna be the closest part to me when I make my petal. Because that's the closest part to me, I'm gonna highlight it. And you don't have to um, be perfect about this, but there is something that you do not want to do. And that is you do not, I repeat, do not 
want to cover up this black. You see that black through there? That black is totally necessary. And if I come in here, cause I'm like, oh, I'm gonna highlight my rows and I do this. Like, no, you're losing your dimension. It's, you're just like, there's just now like this weird kind of white butt crack going on and it doesn't even like it makes no sense visually to do that okay so leave the black parts you need the black parts and another tip that i can give you is when you go to highlight this like don't start on an end because what do we have on our brush we've got this huge blob right look at the blob why would i want to start with a huge blob unless i'm doing like a sperm eyebrow you know what i mean like so you have to put your blob sort of like somewhere in the middle when you're starting this and you have to pull so you can tell your client like turn your hand over for me flip your flip your nails up for me but leave that black there and look at what a like little doo, a little tip I can get on that white line because I didn't try to like y'all I'm about to just do it so you can see what I mean so we want to have like a nice graceful little um edge here and you come in like this because you're like yeah I'm gonna highlight it and like what is it even you know you just all you did was make a giant blob there so that's not what you wanna do, okay? You wanna put your blob down in the center. All of the things I've learned from mainly like doing it myself and then being like, something wrong. Like something doesn't look right. Okay. I know, I'm, you guys, I, I just, it's effective. We all know what sperm eyebrows look like. <laughs> Okay, so coming in, pulling this way now, All right? So we're just defining that like, hey, these petals are really like hugging my rose. And we're gonna do this one too. I want them all hugging inward. What's cool about the bloom gel is that sort of like helps you with that. Oh, beautiful. It really does help you uh, define that naturally because you'll see like the white will be stronger um, a lot of times towards the center. Now you can do this by hand. Like you can just draw these shapes by hand. And when you draw them by hand without the bloom gel, you can really dictate like what's curling in and what's going out. And that is one of my favorite things about um, using... Yeah, good. I'm glad you won't forget it. <laughs> but that's one of my favorite things about using bloom gel is that it it sort of just does a lot of the work for you. Okay. So there's our rose. It's like one of those roses that's just starting to open up. We'll add that little extra, okay? And so now it's kind of super easy from here. We're gonna cure this and we can put like the red or the blue glass gel over top of it. Definitely looks like a rose opening up. It did, it was past, uh, it was past the point of uh, curing, definitely. Um, so it was starting to look like bird poop, but we were able to save it, thank goodness. Let me see if I have a glass gel here, handy, I should. Oh, yep. I feel like if it's your first time doing this, and I always say this, oh, that's not the red. I always say this, but I, um, always say respect the rose. <laughs> <laughs> respect the rose and do it red your first time because um because it just deserves that you made a beautiful rose like don't try to like make it a rainbow rose the first time you can do it the second time I am not against doing like colorful experimental things but the first time you do this really 
Um, just doing it the classic red is, is like paying homage to the rose. <laughs> Uh, if you're going over with glass gel, you can go over with ink too. Ink's always an option. Um, but if you're going to go over with your glass gel like that, make sure you put it on like thick. I mean, you want it thin, but you definitely don't want it like, you don't want it thin. If you put it thin and streaky, it's not going to look good. So just take my word for it. Um, you don't want it like glopping off the sides of the nail, but okay. So that is... Now, I'm gonna, I wasn't planning on doing this, but if you guys will stay with me, I'm gonna sneak, uh, I'm gonna do a little like sneaky extra something that I wasn't planning on doing, but it's, it's all, I feel like you guys just need to learn this and understand it, okay? So I was not planning this, but I'm more than comfortable doing it for you guys just to help you understand. All right, I'm gonna take our, um, Probably do it with metallic top coat, but I happen to have some top coat gel here. I'm gonna mix up my own uh, sort of see-through white right now. We actually do have like a see-through white gel polish coming um, called Antique, um, and uh, probably actually could do it with that. Let me see if I can find it really fast. I just cleaned. Isn't that such a bad idea to clean? Like, <laughs> I can't find anything when I clean. Oh, that's buttercream. Bear with me, y'all. I'm coming. Here's antique. All right, I got it. So you can either like mix your own um, little concoction. Yeah, I'm going to do like this one and one more. But antique reminds me of like Elmer's glue a little bit. Can you all see this? Okay. Shoot. I'm about to just use it. <laughs> So anyway, here's our rose, and we would like top coat it, and I have a little bubble or something there, but whatever. I'm just trying to show you quickly. All right. We do want sort of this color white. Um, I could add a little bit more white to it if I wanted just to like zhuzh it up a little bit more, but I'm going to quickly add the matte top coat to this black nail, and then I'm going to teach you. Yeah, you guys, it's, it's you know... <laughs> What's so funny, I was telling my uh, creative team last night, uh, when I did the new gel polish colors, I uh, thought they picked 42, but I guess I picked the same one twice of one of the colors. And so my girl was like, hey, you need to pick like a 40 second color because you picked four, like you duplicated one. I was like, oh shoot, okay. So um, I just like was on my way to Columbia to adopt the girls and I was like, ah, oh, I can't, like I just, Ah, and I saw they had like sort of a see-through white or something. It looked, I couldn't tell what kind of white it was. I was like, just do that one. And then when it came, I was like, oh snap, this is like a really see-through white. And then I've been like playing with it. And I would say I probably use this. I've used this so much on sets of nails that I've done um, for art, like for a lot of art stuff. So, um, all right. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to like make these shapes by hand on this one. Okay, so I'm actually using the indigo brush uh, just to like get it done a little bit faster. Um, and so I'm gonna have my, my little part sort of swirling down. Can you all see? I might need to pigment this just a hair. Well, I really don't need to, but uh, I want you to be able to see it well. You all see it well? Is it hard to see? Tell me if it's hard to see. Let me know if it, if it's like hard to see. Cause if it is, I'll, I'll like quickly wipe it and just add like a touch more pigment to it. I think I'm just going to, I don't want to wait and waste time. I'm gonna add just a hair, uh, white gel polish to that just to like amp up the pigment a tiny bit more in this, okay. This is um just one of our gel polishes that's on the way. Um, and so all I did was like, I have a black nail and um, I have a black nail. Well, I amped it up just a touch. Uh, it's called Antique. We don't have it on the website yet. It's not available yet, but it's on its way. And um, it is a uh, one of our new gel polish colors. So we're going to come around. And we're going to kind of push here. Okay. 
we're essentially just kind of creating the same shapes that we just did on the last one. But we're just kind of drawing them by hand this time. I'm trying to remember. I did the, uh, roses like this, I think, on Jan Arnold for like Premier Orlando one year. It was fun. It's always fun like doing dimensional stuff on people because it's really like, it can be very mind blowing, um, which is why like dimension art's one of my favorite classes. And I almost feel like this belongs in dimension art um, just as much as, as any other like boxy one we do. This is like our feminine nail for dimension art. So just applying a blob and then sort of like pulling it around. And yeah, you definitely have a little more control over the shape. I feel like doing it with a blooming gel is like a fast way to do this. But if you're like really wanting to just hand, hand paint some stuff, um, you can just do it this way. And I think Jotana's actually like one of her things she teaches this week, or I don't know if it's YouTube, um, she does some roses where you're just like hand painting the shapes. I'm not going to do another one. I'm just going to extend this guy out. All right. Okay, I said I wasn't going to, but last one. Just needed it for balance. Okay. All right. So here's this. Yeah, it's fast and easy with the indigo brush, like really quick and easy with the indigo brush. And if you need to come in here and uh, do a little like detailing on the on the ends, you can. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Come in and just add a little. Okay, so I love teaching this. Are you ready? This is the lesson on how you control. I'm gonna cure this. How you control which way your pedal goes, okay? This is so fun, you guys. You you just have to like, if you can find the time to sit down and do these things, you will, um, you will, it's so mind boggling and mind blowing. Okay, so here's our, our row center right here. We are going to dictate whether our pedal comes this way or goes this way, or it could be like, like this way where it's like kind of out and kind of in. All right. Yeah. Blow your own mind. <laughs> blow your own mind. Okay. So the pedal's either going to come this way, the pedal's going to go this way, or the pedal's going to like do this thing right here that I'm trying to illustrate with my fingers. Um, and it's all whatever you decide. Okay. It's completely up to you what the pedal does. Because we've uh, sort of have this like neutral color. So we don't have, it's not like bloom gel where the bloom gel sort of says like, this is the bright side. This is the dark side. This whole thing is sort of like right in the middle. It's kind of a blank slate. So we get to just choose and decide which way our pedal goes. All right. So uh, let's decide together. We'll do kind of one of each. So if I want, um, and I'm going to work with the white artist gel paint and I'm going to work with my favorite, the lime brush, um, to do this little like blending and detailing that we're going to do. Do you guys like my nail? I've, I've just been like having an artistic explosion over the last couple weeks. So it's been really fun. Anyway. Antique. I did this with antique. I used the white artist gel paints. I don't, I just, I wanted to tell you that because I figured someone will probably ask, but I used the white artist gel paint, the product I'm going to use now. I painted all these little swirlies, like just, you know, like whoosh, 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 whoosh. And then I cured it. And then I came on top with antique, this, uh, like kind of see-through white color that we have. So that's, uh, how I did that nail. And I think it's gorgeous and I'm definitely going to do some longer ones. All right, here we go. So we are going to make our first petal this one right up here above. So this guy right here, we're going to make him curling in. So I'm going to put my highlight along the inner edge. Like that. And we're going to blend this. Okay. We will blend it. 
So I will take my line brush and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna use just the very edge of the bristles to just sort of soften this up and blend it. Another thing that's super cool is like, you know, when you start learning all of these uh, art techniques for nails, um, it makes applying them, sorry if I went out of the camera, it makes applying them like really easy to like other things. So if you wanted to like paint on a canvas or paint roses on your daughter's, you know, bedroom wall or on her lunch box or, you know, like just wherever you would paint random rose stuff. Uh, learning and understanding these techniques is just, it's so like universally helpful in art in general. Okay, so now this petal up here, I wanna make this guy look like it's going out. So we said like we have the middle and we want the fingers going outward. So again, don't start in the middle, or I mean, don't start on the edge. Put your blob sort of down. But we're gonna highlight the outer edge of this one. Right? And you're gonna see like, so this one that we, the first one that we did makes it look like it's curling over the middle part. This one's gonna look like it's coming out. And again, we're gonna take and just, I like to just gently blend this. And the, the key to blending this is like, you're just tapping. It's just a tap. You don't wanna go over the line with your brush because you wanna have a nice crisp white line for your edge. And if you go over, it's not the end of the world. You just have to like put your crisp white line back, okay? So we have one petal that's curling in. We have one petal that's curling out. And now let's make one that kind of like just flip flops and can't decide what it wants to do. So what we're gonna do with this petal here is I'm gonna start my blob. Do you see the shape right here? That's where we're going. So I'm gonna put my blob sort of right in the middle of it. And we are going to have this guy uh, coming out. But then the top half of it will have curling in. Do you see what just happened there? Okay, all we did was kind of like a weird squiggly line, right? But now watch how we blend this to make it look like it's like going out and in. So it's doing both because it can't make up its mind. So we're gonna come out here and we're gonna blend this out. Okay, so we gave it a little blend that way, and then we're gonna blend the inside of it here. So this petal looks like it's both curling in and flopping out. Isn't that cool? So this is like one of those things, you guys really do determine which way the petal goes when you do a rose this way based on where you put the highlight and where you put, uh, you know, where you leave it dark or leave your shadow. Um, this one we'll just have being out. So we'll kind of start here. Some people don't even like to blend these the, the lines that they make. And, and believe me, like it will still look really awesome if you choose not to blend it. So you can just kind of pop that bright line there and um, be like, I'm not even gonna blend it. It still looks cool. And you know, like how much time do you actually have? If you're doing press on nails, you probably have a bunch of time. Whereas uh, if you're doing this like on your actual client, um, you got to go quick. So if I'm doing this in the salon, I'm pulling out blooming gel. Um, if I'm doing this um, on press-ons or something like that, where I don't have to be in a huge hurry, 
or if I'm really trying to like impress someone with my artistic skills, I'm gonna do this one and have complete control over what every single petal is doing based on whatever I tell them to do. So there's our little bottom one and then we have the middle. And do we want the middle flaring out? Do we want the middle curling inward? What do you guys think? So this is like where we get to dictate, like what do we want the middle to be doing? Um, I kind of like the idea at least of this part coming out. And then maybe this part's curling in. Okay, very delicate. And you can't always get in there with your, uh, hold on a second, sorry. Can't always get in there with your line brush for this part, so sometimes I will take my indigo brush. To get in there and just soften. Ooh, what do you think, what do you think? Very 3D, right? Like very, very. So uh, this is, like I said, it's different, but I wanted you guys to learn. I hope that y'all, did y'all grasp what I just taught you about controlling what goes in and what comes out? Please tell me you did. <laughs> um, another thing that you will probably right before you cure want to check is check your little ends. You don't want to have any bulky looking. Sorry, I got to like get in here. You don't want any bulky looking ends. You want all of the little ends to be very delicate. So I like to go in and just check the very edge of all of my shapes to make sure that I don't have like any bulky looking stuff, right? Okay, thank you, thanks guys. But I really like, I did this just because I wanted to teach you I wanted to teach you how to make the rose do what you want it to do, okay? And it looks like we could probably use another petal over here on the side. Um, I'm not going to just for, because I think you guys get the point. We can always add it. Of course you can add it. Just add the petal, all right? So just a fast recap, and then we'll do a 3D rose, and then I'll, I'll get off here. But fast recap, sorry. So what we did was we took these shapes, so we, we are left with shapes that look like, you know, maybe the shape looks like this. And you are able to decide um, on the shape. I'll take the same shape three times and just show you. So by putting the highlight out here, it makes the, the petal look like it's doing this. It's, it's opened up like this because this part here is the part that's closest to you. So my highlight goes on the outer edge of the shape. I feel like, okay, listen, I'm just like for the sake of art, for the sake of art, you guys, okay? There's, this is gonna be my highlight. So the shape that my fingers are making, where's my highlight? It's out here. When I come in this way, the shape my fingers are making, where's the highlight? It's on the inside. And when I do that like halfway in between thingy, where's the line going? It's going like through the middle sort of, right? Through the middle of that shape. I'll wipe that off really fast. Don't wanna give myself an allergy to gel products. Don't, don't do that at home, okay? So that means if I place my white line here, the dark is gonna be here, and it's gonna look like, oh, this petal's curling up this way. If I put my highlight on the inside, put my dark here, it's gonna say, oh, like this petal's curling in. And if I'm like, hey, I can't make up my mind as to what I'm doing, You're gonna have this one looking like it's like, oh, sort of like caught between the two a little bit. So this was the same shape and look how different it looks, right? 
okay? The same exact shape. It's all about where you put that highlight and how you blend it, okay? So yeah, there's this one. We decided which way every petal was going. You put your glass gel over top of it, whatever, okay? So yeah, that's the second demo. Hopefully you guys, I really got it. And I'm gonna, if you have enough brain power to just stick with me through one more quick demo, um, then stick with me. I will do a 3D rose. But you guys, like I think learning what you've learned so far um, about dimension and stuff like that, um, same thing, like the same thing's gonna apply. So when we do this rose, we're gonna start with a meatball we're going to flatten and we're working with the wildflowers art paste. We're going to flatten it into like a pancake a bit. We're going to turn that pancake into a cinnamon bun by just kind of coming through and poking it. And then the hardest part when you do the 3D rows is like cutting this apart. You can't just come in here like you got some kind of butter knife and you're just going to be like chop, chop, chop. You can't do it. It actually has to be done on an angle. So just to like really zoom in here, like major big time so you guys can understand this. So this is like about what it's going to look like. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you come back and watch the rest. It's so good to see you guys on here. Really um, encouraging for me. So thank you for, for joining and watching. I'm just trying to make y'all better artists. Trying to teach you all this stuff that I learned and I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Okay. So if we're doing the three, two, one, all right. So we're going to have like our um, three petals on the outside too. And then like the, the little swirly thing in the middle. Okay. So we're going to break this outer part, which is essentially like from here all the way around. We're going to break this outer part into three petals. But we don't want to just have our petals side by side. We want to have them overlapping, okay? So when we break this apart, we actually have to cut it on an, a diagonal angle like that. Did you see how I, like, drew that line? I didn't draw my line like this, okay? My, my line was on a diagonal angle. So super important, okay, that when you're cutting this apart, you're cutting on a diagonal. So now this is petal number one, this is petal number two, and there's petal number three. Did even really matter what angle it was just as long as it's diagonal. So don't overthink this, don't make yourselves crazy, all right? This one we're gonna cut into two, so another diagonal. So this is uh, like would be number one, and then we have number two. And then look what we're left with, our swirl in the middle. Hey, okay. Y'all catch that, how we cut that apart? Yeah, screenshot it if you need to. I feel like this should be like 2.1 and 2.2. <laughs> and this can just be like three. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's what you have to do. You gotta cut it on an angle. I'm going to do this. Uh, it's uh, my best advice to you is why do you think we work on these dark color nails? Why does it work so good on a black nail? Does anybody know the answer to that? Can anyone answer my question for you? Why does it work so good with that black nail for the background? Anyone, anyone? I know there's a delay. But yeah, the answer is gonna be, because it creates such great dimension. Yeah, it makes it pop, but like it's, we need it to be darker on the inside and lighter on the outside of the petal, right? To really make it, um, to really make it pop artistically so that it doesn't just look like a poop emoji. Because a lot of people do these 3D flowers that look like poop emojis because you're just piling petals. Yeah, good answers, everyone. You're piling petals on top of petals. And um, sadly, what happens when you just pile petals on top of petals, because you're thinking, like, I'm going to actually, like, make a rose. So, like, when people think, well, I'm just going to make a rose, they think, like, okay, you know, that means I got to put a petal here and a petal there. And you start stacking petals on top of each other. But you totally can't do an effective rose that way. I mean, maybe for fantasy or something, but not for, not for like, 
on a client's nail. I'm going to recommend that you work with the pointed um, slim silicone tool. It's a great one for this. Right. So here we go. Our nail has been top coated with the Wildflowers Top Coat Gel. Some people like to do this on a matte nail, and honestly, I don't know how they do it. I, I get very frustrated when I'm trying to work on a matte nail um, because I feel like the product doesn't stick quite as well on a matte nail. So just... If it's your first time working with the product, so this is the Wildflowers Art Paste, comes in a ton of different colors. So fun, like so many colors. They, they're like in little color sets. Um, you don't wanna touch it, you guys. It's a gel product. It's not like it's gonna burn you or hurt you, but just a little quick uh, tip for you if you're like really trying not to touch it and being a good nail tech that you should be well educated because we know like touching gel products causes gel allergies. And you'll, soon you'll be allergic to HEMA and you'll be like, I don't know what happened, my whole career is ruined, okay? So um, a great way if you don't have like gloves handy to work with this stuff is just throw it on your flower palette and kind of like get it close to the way you want it, all right? Once you've done that, um, another tool you can work with is your clear stamper, um, which is kind of awesome. So uh, I tend to, to work with the uh, silicone tools um, with a little alcohol. This is from like our big silicone tool set. And I should be able to push this out into my, so he said first a meatball, then a pancake, right? So we're, we're getting the pancake going right now. Okay. So there's my pancake. Just to show you quickly how thin this is. You can see how thin. It's like nice and thin. Nice thin little pancake. Okay. I'm going to come in here now with either my fidget stylus or my dotting tool. Um, you can pick your, choose your weapon. Either one will work. And this is where we're going to start making our cinnamon bun. So I'm just going to like kind of poke in here. I like to just do a lot of little pokes because if you put this in and just start like pushing it, um, you're going to have paste like going flying up in crazy directions and it's just not as, uh, it just, it just creates kind of a mess for you to have to clean up. All right. So you just do that by poking and you can see like from poking in it, it raises it up just a little bit. Then what I like to do is I really like to get in there and almost like clean this out and almost kind of push back on the product to sort of open it up a little bit, okay? If uh, you feel like you're having trouble with the product or the product like you saw lifted up on me a little bit, just tack it back down. How do you tack it back down? You just have to like push it back onto the nail just like that did you see how I just pushed it and don't worry that it's like a little messy and it's a little imperfect it's all gonna be okay just trying to like spread it out a little bit and open it up a little bit okay We have lots of product left in the middle to play with and that's gonna work to our advantage when it comes to like the very end part where we're gonna work on our swirl. So just so you can see, like it's definitely raised up a little bit. We almost have these little walls that have happened. Um, looks like a, a maze that they make out of bushes, like a labyrinth or something or a cornfield, whatever, depending on where you live and who you watched when you were a kid. It's a labyrinth for me, David Bowie. All right. Now, uh, we're going to cut this apart. And again, this is where, like, you can choose your weapon. I got, like, these great tweezers. Um, these work great for cutting. Uh, you cut it with your dotting tool. You cut it with your fidget stylus. So whatever you want to work uh, with to cut it. So just make sure that when you're cutting it, it's happening on that diagonal that we talked about. Did you see how I just pressed? Sorry about that. Did you see how I just pressed in there? Cutting on that diagonal, okay? All of these steps sort of have to be completed before you can go in and refine it. So we have our outer three. Do you guys see them? One, two, three. And then we're gonna have a two. be our 
first one. in my brain and thinking a little bit of like what kind of diagonal cut I want to do on this guy. You have to have a little imagination when you do nails. Okay. So I've got my two and then I've got my one in the middle. Yeah, it is a rose. It's still like really not finished at all. Okay. But it's there. Now, some people like to come in with a brush and do this. I am not a fan of the brush for this. Um, our products are pretty soft, so like if you wanted to come in with your lime brush and get in there, but I just feel like there's like bristles and like, you know, it's it's just kind of hard to like get in there and really get it smooth. I really like working with the Slim Silicone tools, okay? They're only like 12 bucks. Um, I think you get like five different heads on it, which is awesome. So I'm gonna come in here and it just is so much more organic looking when you use one of these tools as opposed to a brush. Um, but you know, some people are great and they do use a brush and that's, you know, how they do it. So you can try what you want. But what I love about the silicone tool is that if you get it wet with just a little alcohol, you can come in here and you get that really smooth, um, smooth look. It almost looks like the 3D acrylic when we would do 3D acrylic back in the day. All right. So I'm gonna have my client turn their hand for me. Because a lot of people, this is what happens in class. They go push, 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 like this. And they get that ripply. See how ripply it is? Got all those little ripples in it everywhere. I mean, they're just excited to get to this point a lot of times, like especially if it's one of their first times doing it. They're like, oh my God, I can see the rose. Like we're almost there to the finish line. And so, um, but the finishing work is really what makes this so beautiful. So you can get in there and push, push, push all you want, but you really have to go back and smooth it. So how do you smooth it? You use your silicone tool and watch. Oh my gosh, did you see how that just smoothed that right out? Tiny bit of alcohol, tiny bit of pressure. Wow, so much smoother, okay? Yeah, a lot of people, yeah, it's like, oh my God, when you get to this point, you're like, holy crap. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna work on my third pedal, or yeah, my third pedal here. Just come in there and sort of like detach it where it was touching. No touching. Yeah, and it actually is quite tiny. Push it in the middle a little bit so I can pull it down just for like the shape and then I'm coming in and just doing a little smoothing. Um, you're going to be tempted to, to like really squash down the petals and you really don't need to squash the petals down guys. Okay. Girls, guys, whoever, all of you watching. So don't crush. See how they're standing up a little bit. Don't crush them down. When you crush them down, what's going to happen is it's going to lay on top of the other petals and you're going to lose that black. Remember how I was like, don't paint over the black with your white. Like, let me show you what happens. I don't want to show you what happens because I don't want to wreck this rose. But I'm telling you right now, please trust me. If you come in here and get heavy handed and start pushing this petal down, you're going to lose that black. Do you see the black? It's the same thing as like the black line when we did our blooming nail. Okay, it's same black line. You come in here and start pushing this down, you lose the black. And then it just, you don't have that dimension that you're looking for and wanting to achieve because you just, you just covered it up. And now, doesn't it look like a little belly button in the middle? We've got our last little belly button to deal with. And this is my favorite part. It's actually really easy. Don't let it intimidate you. Um, but you can get in there and you could, there's so much product left, honestly, like I could make this thing twirl around probably twice. Um, and you can come in here, see how it like is touching. Just shove your tool in there, man. Open it back up. 
push it. Don't be afraid of it. People get so afraid of the middle part because they feel like it's just so delicate and so like fragile. And it's like, don't be afraid of the product. Um, get in there with your tool, manipulate it, push it, move it around. Because getting the middle of this rose to look good, oh my gosh, it's like the finishing, it's like the cherry on top. If you can make that middle part just whirl around so perfectly, look at the way that thing's whirling. Don't be afraid of it. I'm telling you guys, like I can make this thing whirl around and around. Look how much whirling's going on in the middle there. And I had enough product to do it. So like, make sure you're leaving yourself product, but don't go in there and smash it. People wanna come in here and just smash it. And I'm like, no, my God, no. Let it stand up, y'all. Let it stand up. <laughs> Let the middle stand up and be, it's protected. It's got all these petals around it, okay? Another great thing about this product is um, it actually uh, is, you know, pliable, you can still move. So if you're like, oh, I don't like the way this outer petal is looking, it doesn't like balance the flower well, well shoot, move it. That's one of the coolest parts like compared to working with liquid and powder acrylic, it's like once you've got it, the way you've got it is done. You can't really manipulate it or move it around. Um, but when you're working with this product, you totally have the ability to come in there and make those adjustments for your balance and your proportion so that everything's like looking the way you want it to look, okay? You can come in there, you can put some waves in your petals if you want so that they're not so uniform looking. Um, you know, you do all that kind of stuff. Um, little leaves, let me cure this first. Leaves are so, so easy with this product. I can't even like, begin to tell you how easy the leaves are the little pet like you know the little green leaves this is from our neon collection and honestly it only takes like the tiniest little bit to make a little leaf um, one of the most important things when you're doing leaves is you don't want your leaves oh thank you you don't want your leaves to be like more than 30 percent of your of your flower because if it, it competes with it and I like to make my leaves tiny 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 like so so tiny um there's a little space right in here this would be a great spot for a little leaf all right you too can make yummy roses thank you by the way <laughs> but you guys can do it too I know you can it just takes like a little understanding um of the the dimension of the rose and like where the parts and pieces kind of go and once you understand that, like, there's just so much. I mean, like, after this, it's like, okay, how do we do a rose from a side view? Yeah, and the church said tiny. Tiny, tiny, pequeña. Learning all these words in Spanish, too. Developed quite the Spanish vocabulary, thanks to my daughters. They, try, they were trying to teach me how to say something yesterday. It was hilarious. And they're like, no, watch my mouth. Because that's what, <laughs> Maria, she's so sweet. Maria from Nail Camp. I don't know if you guys knew that, the lady Maria, that I, I was like, come to Nail Camp. And she came to Nail Camp. And she's like, a, you guys think that's going to be my pedal, but it's not. I'm going to actually turn this into two. She's been like an ESL teacher forever. For like years and years. And she just retired. And so she's doing like um, online tutoring now. And she is amazing. And so anyway, I was like, sign me up. How much is it? Let's do this. Like, I want to help my kids learn English. Because um, if you don't know, they're adopted from Colombia. And they've only been here for a couple months. And so we're, we're doing the English. And so anyway, um, yeah, every time she's like, watch my mouth. Um, and so now when they try to teach me, they're like, watch my mouth. <laughs> it's cute. Okay, so I actually have two little blobs. I split that in half, as you, as you hopefully saw into two little blobs, okay? And now I'm gonna take my pointed silicone tool and I'm gonna come right into the base of this and I'm just gonna start pressing. Look at that, you guys. Did you see that? Look at that. Just from pressing the point of my tool into it, it's already like done that. And how effortless was that? It was effortless. It's not complicated, y'all. You don't have to like 
get in there and push and pull and do all this stuff. I'm using the tip of that to just pull it a tiny bit, okay? Tiny bit. Yeah, Maria is seriously amazing. Like, I can't even. She's an incredible person. I know for those of you who, ha who got to meet her, she's just super awesome. Look at those little things. Tiny, super tiny. I don't want them big, I don't like them big. You can always go bigger, but like, yeah, how easy was that? And the dimension's already there because we have a dark background. I can't tell you how many people like, and you don't have to do black. Oh my gosh, you don't need to do black. You could do anything. You could do um, like so many colors. I'll, I'll pull this out and show you one last time and then I'll flip the camera. I'm like, what did I do? Oh, my eyes are just burning because um, I've been staying up like way too late because I'm like I said, I'm working on a Revlon project right now with CND and it's <sighs> it's one of those that like I can't get it done unless I stay up late when the kids are sleeping. <laughs> Oh, but it's like taking a toll on my neck from all the looking at little stuff and hand painting. All right. So here it is. But the dimension's there because of that black background. So your whole nail doesn't have to be black. You just want to get something like kind of dark. And I don't have like my portfolio. Oh, actually, here, I do have one of my portfolios. Um, I was going to say like I have a whole portfolio of roses and... Um, so this is why, like, on this set of nails that I did, and I, I'm pretty sure we posted these already, why do you think I put the black? Because the black gives it the depth and dimension. I need to find a massage service. I'm going for a physical today. Like, <laughs> that's not going to be fun. But, yeah, I really do need to. I'm going to call the chiropractor. I was like, I woke up this morning. I was like, I need to call the chiropractor. But anyway, um, color theory happenings. You can see the opposite colors. You've got like the peach and the this is the neon teal color that we have coming out. Oh my God, it's my favorite. Um, the pink and the green, the orange and the blue. So like you can kind of see what, what was happening here. But that's why I put the, the dark spot underneath. It's kind of cartoony. Um, so I did some fun stuff for Rose Week. Uh, these ones look sort of like an illustration. And I totally copied it from like a kid's art technique thing and did some here and this is just sloppy um but you can tell it's roses like so I didn't sit there and go ahead and get in you know the like to the inner and ins and outs of it so I just like put a little black in there and put a little white in there and called it a day because it's so small um so anyway I hope that you guys learned a lot today um about making roses I'll flip my flip my camera back around here maybe oh there you are all right Sorry, y'all. I hope that you uh, learned something today. I hope I was able to teach you something today about roses. Um, all the products that I did use are from wildflowersnails.com from our website. Um, yeah, make sure you use the hashtag WFRose. Is that what you put? I hope that's what you put. Roses. Okay, we're doing roses. WFRoses this week. Um uh, so that we can see what you guys create. And again, like I said, I hope that you all learned something from the live today. Um, I hope that you'll share it with somebody. I will probably upload it to YouTube today because I was I was pretty disciplined in not going off the deep end. Um, so I will try to upload this to YouTube so our YouTube uh, followers can also view it and learn all about roses. But I hope that you guys learned a lot. Um, thank you for coming here every week for the, for the education. Um, I really... Like, I, a lot of people are like, oh, do online courses, do online courses. And I'm like, why don't you just come every Monday at 11 and I'll teach you for free? <laughs> because this is essentially what would go in an online course. I'm not withholding anything from you all. I am giving it all to you. I am withholding nothing. So um, I hope that you're enjoying it, like I said, and thank you for coming. It really makes me happy. It's my joy in life to help like educate and teach you guys and kind of push you further along artistically. Um, 
because I'm not out there in the salon uh, and I'm not out there like competing or doing any of these cool things that I see a lot of you guys doing. Um, I'm kind of running wildflowers and all the logistics of this and I love it. I do love it, but it like, I kind of live vicariously through you guys sometimes and I'm so proud uh, when I see you guys uh, like trying new things, learning new things, practicing. I know how hard it is to practice. Like it's so hard to find the time and make the time to practice nails, um, especially like, I mean, just, I feel like for all of us, like anyone with kids, anyone running a business, anyone working, um, anyone like that has to clean their own house, like shout out to you. I'm, I'm telling you, like, it's hard to make time and you just have to make time. If you want to get better, you have to make time. You have to find time to practice. And so uh, whenever you can find time or set aside time, I'll say like if you're in a salon and you get a cancellation, don't use that 45 minutes or that hour um, to be like pissed off and rant about it the whole time. Like take your 10 minutes to be pissed. All right, you deserve it. You can be pissed for 10 minutes, but after you're done being pissed, do something constructive and utilize that time because that time is valuable. Um, it's not just valuable because your person didn't show up, like it's valuable to you. So use the time for something that's gonna help you make more money and something that's gonna help you grow as a nail uh, professional, as a nail artist, and um, yeah else my spiel for today so anyway i love you guys so much i will see you next week of course and don't forget tomorrow at 11 we have aaron teaching you amazing rose things and jotana will be on uh, at seven on thursday so right here on our facebook page uh, facebook live wildflowers nail academy if you're watching this over on youtube um make sure you go over and um Find our Facebook page and hit the little like notification thingy, whatever it is. I don't know because they're different on everything, but uh, make sure you turn on the notifications to know when we're going live because if we're going live, it's almost always to give a free art lesson or because something like arrived here and I'm excited about it and I just want to show you really fast. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's how you can stay connected to us. So definitely, yeah, like the bell or whatever it is, uh, hit the bell, whatever. Um, but stay connected to us if you want to join us. So every week of the whole year, we are doing these lessons and these different art techniques. And like I said, it's our privilege and pleasure to be able to uh, teach you guys. It's, it's our passion and we're out here just like doing what we love and hopefully helping you do what you love. So, all right, you guys, I will catch you next week. Don't forget to use the hashtag WF roses. If you do some work or some of the things that you learn throughout the week, we just love it. It's so rewarding to see what you create. So bye guys. Have a great week.